Have you ever found yourself wondering if a saved date has expired? It can be a real headache, especially when you're trying to keep track of important deadlines. If that's you, you're in the right place. Today, we're diving into how to calculate date differences using the local date class in Java. I totally get it. Keeping track of expiration dates is crucial, especially in applications where licenses or time-sensitive data are involved. You're not alone in this struggle. Many developers face similar challenges. Here's the specific question we're addressing today. One user asked, is using the local date class the best way to check if a saved date has expired? They want to ensure that their utility class accurately checks if a date is before the current date, considering the time when the user clicks save. Sound familiar? Let's explore this together. So what's the best approach? The local date class is a great choice for handling dates without time zones. However, if you need to account for time zones, you might want to consider additional strategies. Let's break down the code and see how it works. And stick around. At the end of this video, I'll share a pro tip on how to handle time zones effectively, which is crucial for your application. To begin, the user should ensure that they are using the correct version of the local date class from the 310 backport library. This library provides the local date functionality for Java versions prior to Java 8. Next, the user should modify the hasDateExpired method to account for time zones. This can be done by using the zoneDateTime class instead of local date, which allows for time zone adjustments. Now the user should implement the logic to convert the saved date and current date to the same time zone before performing the expiration check. This ensures that the comparison is accurate regardless of the user's location. Finally, the user should test the updated method to ensure it works correctly across different time zones. This can be done by simulating different user time zones and checking the expiration logic. Fun fact! Did you know that time zones can be a real headache for developers? Just when you think you have it all figured out, someone travels to a different zone and everything goes haywire. Now, let's look at the answers provided by other users. An alternative approach, suggested by another user, emphasizes the importance of considering time zones when calculating date differences. They recommend using the period class to represent time spans in a more self-documenting way. However, they caution that period is not suitable for all scenarios, especially when dealing with weeks or months. Additionally, the user mentions the duration class, which represents time in seconds and fractions. However, they clarify that duration is not appropriate for date-based calculations, as this question focuses on date differences rather than total hours. Let's take a look at an answer from another user. An alternative approach suggested by another user is to use the duration class from the java.time package. They recommend calculating the difference in days between the current date and the saved date using the duration.between method. This method checks if the difference exceeds the specified number of days. Let's take a look at an answer from another user. An alternative approach provided by another user involves using simple date format to handle time zones. They set the time zone to UTC, ensuring all date and time calculations are consistent. The user checks if the save date is before the calculated expiration date. They demonstrate this with a code example that shows how to determine if a date has expired based on the UTC time zone. Let's check out another perspective from a different user. An alternative approach suggested by another user is to simplify the expiration check using the java.util date class. They propose a method that calculates the expiration time in milliseconds and compares it to the current time. This method works well on older JRE versions as it uses UTC milliseconds, making time zones irrelevant. The user also mentions that you could further simplify this by using a long variable for saved time instead of java.util.date. That's it for that answer. Let's take a look at another one. 
An alternative approach provided by another user involves creating a utility class called expired date. This class uses java.util.date to determine if a date has expired based on a specified number of days and accounts for time zone differences. The user calculates the expiration by multiplying the number of days by the milliseconds in a day and adjusting for time zone differences. They provide test cases to validate the functionality. Here's the pro tip I promised. Always store dates in a standard format like UTC and convert them to the user's local time zone only when displaying them. This will save you a lot of trouble down the line. And there you have it. You now have a better understanding of how to calculate date differences and handle expiration checks. If you found this video helpful, please hit the subscribe button for more tips and don't forget to check out our next video for more coding insights.